This is Bananas, Crackers, and Nuts, a program about coloring outside the lines in a world that keeps trying to take away your crayons. My viewpoints are largely based on the concepts that the only constant you can count on in life is change. And paranoid is, more often than not, just good thinking in disguise. Teenage kids go through a very traumatic time. There are things happening to kids that, uh, in a short period of time from, say, 12 to around 20, never happened before, will never happen again. On the other hand, during this very rapid, rapid period of growth, a lot of books are written about it. People have special programs. They pay special attention to what's happening to teenage kids. But I don't think it's as recognizable that the same thing is happening to older people to the same degree, just in reverse. Sort of like looking through the other end of the telescope. Especially when you get into being a, a seasoned citizen, all right? It, it starts, I mean, this disintegration of body biologically, if I remember my, my biology from school correctly, it starts around 21. You start going down. Things aren't, you know, at their prime anymore. But seasoned citizens, uh, it's another story. Uh, they have programs for them, of course. There's books written about how to treat them, how to take care of them. But taking care and caring about are two different things. And that's, that's what I maintain is that, that basically there aren't enough people in society that care about people once they hit a certain age. It begins at around 50 or 60, as I, as I said before, when you become invisible. You disappear. The world doesn't seem to see you anymore. I mean, you could, you could put a refrigerator on your back at Walmart, hike out the door after you're like 55, nobody even see you. Uh, it's, it's a crazy phenomenon. You stand in line at the, the checkout, and these kids just continue to, to hold a conference. But people just disregard you anymore. It, it's like you just vanish, like somebody threw a switch. On the other hand, once you come into 60 or so, it's between that 50 and 60 period, by the way, that your body starts to turn on you. There's a great line in one of my favorite shows of all time, MASH. There's an episode where Colonel Potter is told by an old friend, hey, Sherm, you, you just 30 years, you don't look any different. And the reply is golden. He says, well, that's because all the stuff that's old falls away, you know, like hair and teeth. And, and it's true. And this is part of this disintegration that I'm, that I'm talking about. You've now lost your identity, particularly if you're a guy. Your so-called productive years are over. And now you're, you're sort of, uh, uh, what's, uh, what am I about? Especially men who define themselves by their occupation. I mean, at a party all your life, what's the first thing? You go there, well, what do you do for a living? Uh, if you're unemployed, <laughs> that's another story. But you know, generally, that's what, that's what guys talk about. And I don't know, I think on the other side of the room, usually women talked about the guys, right? But talking about what society doesn't really grasp, I think, about as fast as teenage kids are growing and developing, seasoned citizens are coming in, up, apart, are coming unglued. You can't begin to comprehend this until it starts to happen to you. And of course, kids <laughs> don't understand this at all. They're never going to be old. It's, you know, Superman, Captain Marvel, and Batman all rolled into one. Every kid is invincible, bulletproof, and never going to get old till it happens. All right? I think nature's cruelest joke is taking a 20 year old kid and trapping him or her, in a body that just won't respond the way it was designed to do anymore. I know my first hint of this was, uh, oh, at about age 34, I guess. I used to play a lot of baseball. Second base, I get down there, scoop up those grounders. Over the first, you know, no problem. And then all of a sudden, I wasn't getting over as fast, filling the hole, scooping them up. Actually, I could still scoop them up. I couldn't stand up to throw without making a funny noise. Ever notice how everybody else always looks older than you do? 
In fact, that's Fred's second law. Everybody else always looks older than you. You take a look at pictures of old friends, you know, you go to reunions or you see you know, classmates and such, or you just see somebody in a news article in the paper and it says, an oldster of 55, and you look at it and you go, what? 55? He's 55? Somebody must have left a one-off someplace. No, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't look like that. I'm older than that. I don't look like that. Well, <laughs> maybe it's a good thing that your spouse doesn't think you do either. And I think that's one of the beautiful things. Uh, uh, you not only look uh, look much younger than those around you of the same age, but when you can look at your wife or your wife back at your husband, and it's still that same marvelous person that you married. Speaking of looking, that's something else that can happen, too. That, that Looking at the plus side of this, this traumatic period, you can still look what I call both ways. That is younger and older. I mean, when you were 20, an older woman was like 25. But, you know, when you're 50, you may feel like a lech, but you can still look at a 20-year-old and go, wow. But you can also look at a well-kept woman of 60 or 65 I say, hey, that's, that's, that's great. You can look at parts, too. Uh, you know, great bosoms or uh, a well-turned leg. A lovely face. Just a lovely face will do it. Because now, unlike when you were younger, it's like a painting. If you don't like the frame, you can still look at the picture. But you're not going to take the picture off the wall and take it home anymore. You just look at it and leave it and go, you know, it's there it is, and I'm going home. You get some people, though, that you, know, you, you start to look at, at convenience, too, I think, when you're older. You can look both ways at other people. And you look at yourself. Oh, I think most guys tend to try to avoid, especially guys, mirrors, especially the side view. You don't turn sideways anymore, do you? Uh-uh. Ladies, they go into the, uh, the convenience hairdos. You know, these little pure, pure white hair, and it's, it's like, cut shorter than most guys have. And in the morning, you just can go blip. And kind of fix it, and it's all done. Call them Q-tips. Look at them sometime walking down the street, especially a thin lady with a convenience hairdo. Q-tip. Brown hair. Used Q-tip. I have to tell you about a story. It's about a diner. Uh, diners are phenomenons. So if you're not from the New Jersey area, which is where I'm from, it's a New Jersey phenomenon. They're kind of long, narrow places to eat with you know bad food and cheap prices, but it's filling. And you won't die from it. You may get sick from it, but you won't die from it. I took VG to breakfast once at our favorite diner, sat there enjoying our omelet, which is my favorite thing to do on a Sunday morning, and having a nice conversation. All of a sudden, we were joined by a third party. Somebody across the room was staring at me. I mean, he was staring through me. And every time I looked up, here's this old, this old coot just looking at me. Old goofy-looking conjure. A big gray everywhere. Even his hair, you know. Uh, what was left of it. Bald guy, gray beard, wrinkled, face sagging kind of thing. And he's sitting there in these cruddy old, comfortable-looking clothes. That, and I'm looking at him. I'm saying, why is he staring at me? I thought maybe, you know, I had some egg in my teeth or something. I'm like, I got that. And it's, no, I wasn't it. Every time I looked up, staring at me. And I thought, well, I'm going to get this guy good. I am going to stare back until he flinches. And I looked, and I stared, and I looked him eyeball to eyeball. And suddenly I said, oh, my God. It was a mirror decorating the space between two windows. I was looking at myself, me, the way other people see me, as opposed to the way I see me. The lesson to be learned from this is stay away from diners, I guess. In any event, I want to leave you with one very important thought. Older is something that Mother Nature does to you, and nothing you can do about it. But old that's in your head, and you do it to yourself. Hey, here's hoping you'll be back next time for bananas, crackers, and nuts. And be sure to check out my blog, would you? It's bananascrackersandnuts.com. And if you really want to do it right, I'd like you to send me an email at fred at fredmacy.com. There's a link on the site as well. Let me know what you think about this whole shenanigan I'm doing. And more importantly, let me know what topics you'd like me to cover in the future. 
Until next time, this is Fred Macy here, urging you to color outside the lines, but don't lose your crayon. <laughs>